Today is day two for the Come Follow Me study for this week, September 2nd through the 8th. Remember the Lord, Helaman 7 through 12. Tuesday, September 3rd, 2024, Helaman 8, 10 through 28 in chapter 9. Moses testified that the Messiah would be God's son. Helaman 8, 10 through 11. And it came to pass that those people who sought to destroy Nephi were compelled because of their fear, that they did not lay their hands upon him. Therefore he began again to speak unto them, seeing that he had gained favor in the eyes of some, insomuch that the remainder of them did fear. Therefore he was constrained to speak more unto them, saying, Behold, my brethren, have ye not read that God gave power unto one man, even Moses, to smite upon the waters of the Red Sea, and they parted hither and thither, insomuch that the Israelites, who were our fathers, came through on dry ground, and the waters closed upon the armies of the Egyptians and swallowed them up. Nephi continued by giving his listeners a sermon based on Old Testament demonstrations of God's power through his servant Moses. He then said, Helaman 8.12, And now behold, if God gave unto this man such power, then why should ye dispute among yourselves, and say that he hath given unto me no power, whereby I may know concerning the judgments that shall come upon you, except you repent? Help your children search Helaman 8.13-23 to find names of prophets, who taught about Jesus Christ. Maybe they can pass around a picture of Jesus each time they find one. Helaman 8, 13-15 But behold, ye not only deny my words, but ye also deny all the words which have been spoken of our fathers, and also the words which were spoken by this man Moses, who had such great power given unto him, yea, the words which he has spoken concerning the coming of the Messiah. Yea, did he not bear record that the Son of God should come? And as he lifted up the brazen serpent in the wilderness, even so shall he be lifted up who should come? And as many as should look upon that serpent should live, even so as many as should look upon the Son of Man with faith, having a contrite spirit, might live, even unto that life which is eternal. As a witness against wickedness and as a testimony of Christ, Nephi directed his listeners' attention to the incident where Moses made a serpent out of brass, placed it on a pole, and urged as many as had faith to look thereon and be healed from the bites of poisonous snakes. According to the Bible, when the people of Israel were being bitten by serpents, and some of the people were dying, the Lord commanded Moses to make a serpent and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. That is the end of the account in the Bible. However, the account in the Book of Mormon indicates that when Moses lifted up the brazen serpent, he did bear record that the Son of God should come. And as he lifted up the brazen serpent in the wilderness, even so shall he be lifted up. Who should come? And as many as should look upon that serpent should live. Even so, as many as should look upon the Son of God with faith, having a contrite spirit, might live, even unto that life which is eternal. The Savior also indicated that the brazen serpent lifted up by Moses was a type, or a shadow, or example, of his own crucifixion, when he said, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The prelude to the Israelites' troubles was speaking evil of God and his prophet just as the corrupt judges of Nephi's day were doing. The lifting up of a brass serpent by Moses was a type, a symbolic representation of the crucifixion of Christ. When the people looked upon the brass serpent, they were healed. Nephi's use of this story emphasizes that we should look upon the Son of God with faith and live. Through the atoning sacrifice of Christ, the poisonous venom of Satan was overcome for all who would repent. He then reminded the people that all of the prophets had testified of Christ. Elder Neal A. Maxwell of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles further clarified the symbolism of the brazen serpent retold in the Book of Mormon. Divinely deliberate and serious symbolism is involved. Without this needed elaboration, the Old Testament episode of the fiery serpents does not give us a fullness of spiritual insight that can clearly be for our profit and learning. The symbolic emphasis in this episode is upon both the necessity and the simpleness of the way of the Lord Jesus. Ironically, in Moses' time, many perished away. The promise of the future is as follows. 
and as many as should look upon that serpent should live. Even so, as many as should look upon the Son of God, with faith, having a contrite spirit, might live, even unto that life which is eternal. Thus now we have the verified and amplified analogy, thanks to the precious and plain things given to us in these last records. The whole episode points toward the need to look upon Jesus Christ as our Lord, likewise a simple but unwaverable requirement. How plain and precious in any age. President Russell M. Nelson said, True disciples of Jesus Christ are willing to stand out, speak up, and be different from the people of the world. They are undaunted, devoted, and courageous. There is nothing easy or automatic about becoming such powerful disciples. Our focus must be riveted on the Savior and his gospel. It is mentally rigorous to strive to look unto him in every thought. But when we do, our doubts and fears flee. Elder Marion G. Romney spoke of the importance of following God's will as given through his prophets. Now from Adam to Noah and beyond, the gospel was taught by father to son. Later on, it was revealed to Abraham. Moses received it anew following the long bondage of Israel in Egypt. Jesus, in the meridian of time, taught and demonstrated it. The Jaredites and the Nephites were likewise prophetically instructed. That men have not enjoyed peace, happiness, and continual progress is therefore not because God has failed to make known the way by which these blessings could be had. It is because men have refused to obey the revealed laws upon which these blessings are predicated. The burden of all the prophets, from Adam to our present prophet, has been to persuade men to look to God and live. Over and over again, in every dispensation, they have warned of calamities pending because of men's corrupt and sinful ways. Cain's curse was brought on by his own willful rejection of the counsel of God. The antediluvians brought on the flood in which they perished by rejecting Noah, who taught and pleaded with them for 120 years. The Jaredites pursued their rebellious course to their utter destruction in defiance of the teachings and warnings of their prophets. Following the same course, the Nephites suffered great destruction at the time of Christ's crucifixion. All of this endless tragedy, carnage, and sorrow could have been avoided. All of these peoples could have existed in peace and prosperity had they been willing to look to God. Elder Romney also talked about our responsibility in serving God. For us as individuals, the course is crystal clear. By precept and example, we should do all that lies within our power to take the message of the gospel, the Lord's solution to our problems, to the peoples of the earth and inspire them to look to him and live. For every individual in this world, there is yet an option, and it is still open. But whatever others may do, let us not personally be diverted from our course. Let us be not faithless, but believing. Let us, so long as we live, continue to seek the Lord to establish his righteousness. Let us prove worthy to live with him eternally in the heavens. Let us not be deceived by the learning and sophistries and the wickedness of this world. Let us not forget that God lives, that we are his children, that his purpose is to bring us to immortality and eternal life. Let us always remember and keep in mind that all man has learned and accomplished together with all that he will yet learn and accomplish immortality is as a drop in the bucket compared to the knowledge and works of God. Let us remember that in the light of God's knowledge, and he knows all things, still his instruction to us against that total knowledge is that above all else, the one thing of most importance to us is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Let us be constantly aware that we are living in the last gospel dispensation, that Satan has marshaled all his forces for war, that he is making his final premillennium struggle for our individual souls and for the souls of all men. Let us realize that the conflict we are now in will be accelerated to such intensity that every man that will not take his sword against his neighbor must flee unto Zion for safety. Let us understand that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the literal kingdom of God in the earth, that neither defectors from within nor enemies from without can stay its progress. It is here to stay and to triumph. In the words of Moroni, the eternal purposes of the Lord shall roll on until all his promises shall be fulfilled. All prophets testify of Christ. Helaman 8, 16-20 
And now behold, Moses did not only testify of these things, but also all the holy prophets, from his days even to the days of Abraham. Yea, and behold, Abraham saw of his coming, and was filled with gladness, and did rejoice. Yea, and behold, I say unto you that Abraham not only knew of these things, but there were many before the days of Abraham who were called by the order of God, yea, even after the order of his son, and this, that it should be shown unto the people a great many thousand years before his coming, that even redemption should come unto them. And now I would that ye should know that even since the days of Abraham there have been many prophets that have testified these things. Yea, behold, the prophet Zenos also testified boldly, of which he was slain. And behold, also Zenic, and also Isaiah, and also Isaiah, and Jeremiah, Jeremiah being that same prophet who testified of the destruction of Jerusalem. And now we know that Jerusalem was destroyed according to the words of Jeremiah. O oh, then, why not the Son of God come according to his prophecy? The prophet Zenos is mentioned twelve times in the Book of Mormon, Zenic five times, and Isaiah once. According to Helaman 8, 19-20, it would seem that these men lived somewhere between the time of Abraham, 2200 B.C., and Jeremiah, 626-586 to B.C. Their writings appeared on the brass plates of Laban, the equivalent of, though more extensive than, our present-day Old Testament, up to 600 B.C. As with all other true prophets of all dispensations, these men bore witness of Christ. Helaman 8, 21-23 And now will you dispute that Jerusalem was destroyed? Will ye say that the sons of Zedekiah were not slain, all except it were Mulek? Yea, and do ye not behold that the seed of Zedekiah are with us, and they were driven out of the land of Jerusalem? But behold, this is not all. Our father Lehi was driven out of Jerusalem because he testified of these things. Nephi also testified of these things, and also almost all of our fathers, even down to this time. Yea, they have testified of the coming of Christ, and have looked forward, and have rejoiced in his day which is to come. And behold, he is God, and he is with them. And he did manifest himself unto them, that they were redeemed by him, and they gave unto him glory because of that which is to come. Second Nephi 11 My soul delighteth in proving unto my people that save Christ should come, all men must perish. For if there be no Christ, there be no God, and if there be no God, we are not. For there could have been no creation. But there is a God, and he is Christ, and he cometh in the fullness of his own time. Elder Bruce McConkie said, Christ Messiah is God, which is the plain and pure pronouncement of all the prophets of all the ages. In our desire to avoid the false and absurd conclusions contained in the creeds of Christendom, we are wont to shy away from this pure and unadorned verity. We go to great lengths to use language that shows there is both a father and a son, that they are separate persons and are not somehow mystically intertwined as an essence or spirit that is everywhere present. Such an approach is perhaps essential in reasoning with the Gentiles of sectarianism. It helps to overthrow the fallacies formulated in their creeds. But having so done, if we are to envision our Lord's true status and glory, we must come back to the pronouncement of pronouncements, the doctrine of doctrines, the message of messages, which is that Christ is God, and if he were not so, he could not save us. Helaman 8, 13-23 How does Nephi's ministry help you understand the role of prophets? What has our living prophet taught us about the Savior? You could also sing together a song about prophets, such as Follow the Prophet. Maybe you and your children could pick a key phrase from the song and write one word from the phrase on each of several paper footprints. Then you could lay the footprints on the floor, leading to a picture of the Savior, and your children could follow the footprints toward the picture. How has following the prophet led us to Jesus Christ? Helaman 8.24, And now, seeing ye know these things, and cannot deny them, except ye shall lie, therefore, in this ye have sinned, for ye have rejected all these things, notwithstanding so many evidences which ye have received. Yea, even ye have received all things, both things in heaven, and all things which are in the earth, as a witness that they are true. 
from Helaman 8 and Doctrine and Covenants 6, 9, 11, 9, 15, 6, and 16, 6, what is every prophet's message? Say nothing but repentance unto this generation. Keep my commandments and assist to bring forth my work according to my commandments, and ye shall be blessed. And now behold, I say unto you that the thing which will be of the most worth unto you will be to declare repentance unto this people, that you may bring souls unto me, that you may rest with them in the kingdom of my Father. Amen. How do you respond to this message? Nephi sustains his testimony with a prophecy. Helaman 8, 25-28 But behold, ye have rejected the truth, and rebelled against your holy God. And even at this time, instead of laying up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where nothing doth corrupt, and where nothing can come which is unclean, ye are heaping up for yourselves wrath against the day of judgment. Yea, even at this time ye are ripening because of your murders, and your fornication and wickedness, for everlasting destruction. Yea, and except ye repent, it will come unto you soon. Yea, behold, it is now even at your doors. Yea, go ye in unto the judgment seat, and search, and behold, your judge is murdered, and he lieth in his blood, and he hath been murdered by his brother, who seeketh to sit in the judgment seat. And behold, they both belong to your secret band, whose author is Gadianton, and the evil one who seeketh to destroy the souls of men. Nephi concluded his appeal for his people's repentance by implying that in rejecting his words, the people were just like those who had rejected the words of Lehi and Nephi in a former age. And then, to cement his testimony firmly in their minds, Nephi prophesied of the murder of the chief judge at the hands of the Gadianton band. Chapter 9. Messengers find the chief judge dead at the judgment seat. They are imprisoned and later released. By inspiration, Lehi identifies Seantum as the murderer. Nephi is accepted by some as a prophet, about 23 to 21 BC, the place of signs and wonders in God's plan. If signs or miracles were enough to change a person's heart, all the Nephites would have been convinced by the remarkable signs Nephi gave in Helaman 9. But that didn't happen. Notice the various ways people reacted to the miracle in Helaman 9 through 10. For example, you might compare the responses of the five men and the chief judges in Helaman 9, 1 through 20. Helaman 9, 1 through 4. Behold, now it came to pass that when Nephi had spoken these words, certain men who were among them ran to the judgment seat. Yea, even there were five who went. And they said among themselves as they went, Behold, now we will know of a surety whether this man be a prophet, and God hath commanded him to prophesy such marvelous things unto us. Behold, we do not believe that he hath. Yea, we do not believe that he is a prophet. Nevertheless, if this thing which he has said concerning the chief judge be true, that he be dead, then we will believe that the other words which he hath spoken are true. And it came to pass that they ran in their might, and came in unto the judgment seat. And behold, the chief judge had fallen to the earth, and did lie in his blood. And now behold, when they saw this, they were astonished exceedingly, insomuch that they fell to the earth. For they had not believed the words which Nephi had spoken concerning the chief judge. And setting forth the test of one who prophesies, Moses said, If the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is a thing which the Lord hath not spoken. Nephi's prediction of the murder of the chief judge was easy enough to check. Now we will know of a surety whether this man be a prophet. Five men went to check and found things precisely as Nephi had said they would be. Even at this time, ye are ripening because of your murders and your fornication and wickedness for everlasting destruction. Yea, and except ye repent, it will come unto you soon. Behold, it is now even at your doors. Yea, go ye in unto the judgment seat and search, and behold, your chief judge is murdered, and lieth in his blood, 
and he hath been murdered by his brother, who seeketh to sit in the judgment seat. And behold, they both belong to your secret band, whose author is Gaddy Anton, and the evil one who seeketh to destroy the souls of men. Helaman 9, 5 through 15. Now behold, when they saw, they believed, and fear came upon them, lest all the judgments which Nephi had spoken should come upon the people. Therefore they did quake, and had fallen to the earth. Now immediately, when the judge had been murdered, he being stabbed by his brother by a garb of secrecy, and he fled, and the servants ran and told the people, raising the cry of murder among them. And behold, the people did gather themselves together unto the place of the judgment seat, and behold, to their astonishment, they saw those five men who had fallen to the earth. And now behold, the people knew nothing concerning the multitude who had gathered together at the garden of Nephi. Therefore they said among themselves, These men are those who have murdered the judge, and God has smitten them that they could not flee from us. And it came to pass that they laid hold on them, and bound them, and cast them into prison. And there was a proclamation sent abroad that the judge was slain, and that the murderers who had been taken and were cast into prison. And it came to pass that on the morrow the people did assemble themselves together to mourn and to fast at the burial of the great chief judge who had been slain. And thus also those judges who were at the garden of Nephi and heard his words were also gathered together at the burial. And it came to pass that they inquired among the people, saying, Where are the five who were sent to inquire concerning the chief judge whether he had died? And they answered and said, Concerning this five whom ye say ye have sent, we know not. But there are five who are the murderers whom we have cast into prison. And it came to pass that the judges desired that they should be brought. And they were brought, and behold, they were the five who were sent. And behold, the judges inquired of them to know concerning the matter. And they told them all that they had done, saying, We ran and came to the place of the judgment seat. And when we saw all things, even as Nephi had testified, we were astonished insomuch that we fell to the earth. And when we had recovered from our astonishment, behold, they cast us into prison. Now, as for the murder of this man, we know not who has done it, and only this much we know. We ran and came according as ye desired, and behold, he was dead, according to the words of Nephi. Isn't it interesting that the five who were sent were five who were converted when they saw proof of Nephi's prophetic ability? Others in the group were unmoved even after Nephi's predictions were totally proven. Helaman 9, 16-36 and now it came to pass that the judges did expound the matter unto the people, and did cry out against Nephi, saying, Behold, we know that this Nephi must have agreed with some one to slay the judge, and then he might declare it unto us, that he might convert us unto his faith, that he might raise himself to be a great man, chosen of God and a prophet. And now, behold, we will detect this man, and he shall confess his fault, and make known unto us the true murderer of this judge. And it came to pass that the five were liberated on the day of the burial. Nevertheless, they did rebuke the judges in the words which they had spoken against Nephi, and did contend with them one by one, insomuch that they did confound them. Nevertheless, they caused that Nephi should be taken and bound and brought before the multitude. And they began to question him in diverse ways, that they might cross him, that they might accuse him to death, saying unto him, Thou art confederate. Who is this man that hath done this murder? Now tell us, and acknowledge thy fault, saying, Behold, here is money, and also we will grant unto thee thy life, if thou wilt tell us, and acknowledge the agreement which thou hast made with him. But Nephi said unto them, O ye fools, ye uncircumcised of heart, ye blind, and ye stiff-necked people, 
Do ye know how long the Lord your God will suffer you, that ye shall go on in this your way of sin? Oh, ye ought to begin to howl and mourn because of the great destruction, which at this time doth await you, except ye shall repent. Behold, ye say that I have agreed with the man that he should murder Seizram, our chief judge. But behold, I say unto you, that this is because I have testified unto you, that ye might know concerning this thing, yea, even for a witness unto you, that I did know of the wickedness and abominations which are among you. And because I have done this, ye say that I have agreed with the man, that he should do this thing. Yea, because I showed unto you this sign, ye are angry with me, and seek to destroy my life. And now, behold, I will show unto you another sign, and see if ye will in this thing seek to destroy me. Behold, I say unto you, Go to the house of Seantum, who is the brother of Seezrim, and say unto him, Has Nephi, the pretended prophet, who doth prophesy so much evil concerning this people, agree with thee, in this which ye have murdered Seezrim, who is your brother? And behold, he shall say unto you, Nay. And ye shall say unto him, Have ye murdered your brother? And he shall stand with fear, and wist not what to say, and behold, he shall deny unto you, and he shall make as if he were astonished. Nevertheless, he shall declare unto you that he is innocent. But behold, ye shall examine him, and ye shall find blood upon the skirts of his cloak. And when ye have seen this, ye shall say, From whence cometh this blood? Do we not know that it is the blood of your brother? And then shall he tremble, and shall look pale, even as if death had come upon him. And then shall ye say, Because of this fear, and this paleness which has come upon your face, behold, we know that thou art guilty. And then shall great fear come upon him, and then shall he confess unto you, and deny no more that he has done this murder. And then shall he say unto you, that I, Nephi, know nothing concerning the matter, save it were given unto me by the power of God. And then shall ye know that I am an honest man, and that I am sent unto you from God. Helaman 9, 21-26 How does Nephi's ministry help you understand the role of prophets? Helaman 9, 37-38 And it came to pass that they went and did, even according as Nephi had said unto them. And behold, the words which he had said were true. For according to the words he did deny, and also according to the words he did confess. And he was brought to prove that he himself was the very murderer, insomuch that the five were set at liberty, and also was Nephi. Nephi, who is this man that hath done this murder? Now, tell us and acknowledge thy fault. Is money and also we will grant thee thy life if thou wilt tell us and acknowledge the agreement which thou hast made with him Ye 
ye blind and ye stiff-necked people. Do ye know how long the Lord your God will suffer you, that ye shall go on in this way of sin? Ye say that I have agreed with a man that he should murder Sizoram, our chief judge. This is because I have testified unto you that I did know of the wickedness and abominations which are among you. And because I showed unto you this sign, ye are angry with me and seek to destroy my life. And now behold, I will show unto you another sign and see if ye will in this thing seek to destroy me. Go to the house of Siantum, who is the brother of Sizorum, what is the meaning and of this? say Why unto him, Has Nephi, the pretended prophet, who doth prophesy so much evil concerning this people, agreed with thee, in the which ye have murdered Sisorum, who is your brother? And behold, he shall say unto you, Nay. And ye shall say unto him, Have ye murdered your brother? And he shall stand with fear, and wist not what to say. Nay, I have not done this thing. And behold, he shall deny unto you, and he shall make as if he were astonished. I have not murdered Nevertheless, Leave my home. he shall declare unto you that he is innocent. But examine him, and ye shall find blood upon the skirts of his cloak. And when ye have seen this, Ye shall say, Do we not know that this is the blood of your brother? And then shall he tremble, even as if death had come upon him. And then shall ye say, Because of this fear which has come upon your face, we know that thou art guilty. And then shall greater fear come upon him. Yes. And then shall he confess unto you, and deny no more that he has done this murder, but that I, Nephi, knows nothing know nothing concerning the matter, save it were given unto me by the power of God. ye know that I am an honest man, and that I am sent unto you from God. Helaman 9, 39. And there were some of the Nephites who believed on the words of Nephi, and there were some also who believed because of the testimony of the five, for they had been converted while they were in prison. Fortunately, there were some who were converted by the testimony of the five men who first believed Nephi, or by the preaching of Nephi himself. Helaman 9, 40-41. And now there were some among the people who said that Nephi was a prophet. And there were also others who said, Behold, he is a God, for except he was a God, he could not know of all things. For behold, he has told us the thoughts of our hearts, 
and also has told us things, and even he has brought unto our knowledge the true murderer of our chief judge. Still others, impressed by the irrefutable power that Nephi demonstrated, were not converted to the source of Nephi's power, but instead superstitiously concluded that he was a god. Upon seeing Nephi's knowledge of secret and hinted things, there were those who wanted to proclaim him to be God. This is understandable given, given the universal acknowledgement of certain characteristics of God. Elder Neal A. Maxwell taught that omniscience is one of the characteristics of God. The Lord, in a revelation for John Whitmer, spoke of that which was in the latter's heart, which only the Lord and John Whitmer knew, witnessing that God was omniscient concerning the needs of that individual. Paul said, to the saints at Corinth. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. In the period just before the flood, God saw not only the wickedness of man in the earth, but he saw also every imagination of the thoughts of men's hearts. He knows the things that come into your mind. Jesus himself said, Before we pray, your Father knoweth what things ye have need of. Indeed, as Nephi said, God knoweth all things, and there is not anything save he knows. His omniscience is one of the characteristics of the living God. As we read in Helaman 9, 41, Except he was a God, he could not know of all things. And now behold, you have received a witness. For if I have told you things which no man knoweth, have you not received a witness?